this is not a cookie. It's actually a chunk of scrap that was sent in. 146 some grams of uh, semi-processed e-waste. Now, generally, I, I don't do uh, electronic waste uh, recycling or processing at all. I do uh, carrot scrap, and that's what's cost-effective for the processes I use. But uh, there was an idea. I, I, I didn't test it on the uh, XRF. When I looked at it, I thought, oh, this looks like a chunk of copper. Uh, but I thought, well, you know, let, let's give it a shot. I just wanted to test it. You know, there, there's bound to be a few grams of gold in there. Uh, the owner went through a compelling process and uh, tried to get off some of the base metals. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of their process, but uh, this is what they sent in. And I thought, all right, well, let's see. Let's it'd be a good experiment here. Uh, so I popped it in the uh, booth here put in some distilled water with some nitric acid and added the heat and you can see the solution is turning a bright blue color which is uh, a clear sign of copper going into solution uh, even though copper is a red metal when it's in solution you get this beautiful uh, cobalt blue and uh, as I poured that off uh, you see that little clump of stuff stuck to the center of the beaker I don't normally have that. It's like a crystallization of some of the uh, copper minerals or something. Uh, I wasn't really sure about that. Usually, I, if something's stuck to the side, I hit it with the spray bottle and it frees right up. That didn't happen. Now, you saw when I poured that off, you see, uh, you see the, the black particles that are kind of falling off, that light, fluffy stuff. I thought, well, there's our gold. So, you know, I, I was hoping we'd have a nice round sponge reminiscent of this button here that we'd end up with but as it's uh, taking away the base metal it's leaving these little black particles and now some of it might have been that slag maybe a little borax that was stuck to it that looked kind of like chocolate chips at the beginning uh, but at this point I'm thinking well it looks like we're pulling some gold off it just was at a low percentage lower than 25 percent and it just can't help hold itself together so uh, I just keep going, keep adding more distilled water, and uh, keep adding more nitric acid until it gets nice and dark. And uh, yeah, just rehydrated it there again, fired it back up. I want to use up all the, the free nitrates, the nitric acid that's in there. Uh, I keep going until the reaction stops. Finally, I'll let it cool down and uh, eventually here pour it off. Now you see as I'm pouring it off, a lot of those light particles that what I suspect is gold is also getting poured off at this point there, there's no way that I could just decant it without with uh, without pouring that uh, powder off of there so uh, the way I'm thinking here at this point is I'm just gonna put this whole piece into solution I'll keep pouring it off and I'll filter the solution later and recover the what I suspect will be gold and uh, here we go again fresh Distilled water, nitric acid, add heat and some time and you get more copper in solution. And now I don't recall testing the solution for silver. Um, yeah, honestly, I should have. It just went into uh, the stock pot after that. And if there is silver, I'll get it out later. But um, yeah, it, it was just like it was. It's seeming like pure, pure copper here, <laughs> so I wasn't I wasn't sure what we're gonna recover, and at this point I'm starting to uh, kind of doubt this process a little bit. But I, I just continue to put this thing into uh, solution, and and we end up here with a bunch of little sludge, and that's that. We finally dissolve that whole cookie. Uh, so I'll clean that beaker out filter this solution here and we'll see at the end what we recover this is the Buckner funnel that I use for uh, silver refining you'll see the other the gold Buckner funnel set up after this so now we're getting down there I rinse it out a little bit so we could see and hey well there's a, a fair amount you know it's perception is there that there's a fair amount of material 
uh, but lightly coated. It's, it's not a ton of weight right there. So I'm going to switch this out here. And uh, we're going to put this into solution. All right. So that was a little hydrochloric acid and uh, a little bit of nitric acid here. I guess once I poured that nitric acid in there, it was kind of the test whether there was silver in that solution, or the, uh, sorry, the hydrochloric acid when I poured it in there without rinsing it off real well. That was kind of the, that kind of showed me that there really wasn't any silver in that solution. So, so far what I'm looking at is a, a little bit of gold maybe, and a lot of copper. And, uh, all right, so we have the hydrochloric acid, a little bit of nitric acid, all these, all these little particles uh, are seemingly going into solution. And at this point, I know that anything that's left is not gold because I put plenty of nitric acid in there. And immediately, um, once I added this uh, distilled water, it got cloudy. And I'm thinking, is that silver? Wait a minute, what's going on? Well, that's the paper filter right there. Uh, that is kind of almost coming back out of solution. So... No, it, it really wasn't a lot of silver. You know, there might be a touch in there, but not enough where I'm seeing any real clumps or anything like that of it. And uh, so here we go. We'll filter this off, and uh, we'll see what we have. Look at that. All right, and that appears to look like silver, uh, but in reality, that was the filter. And as I poured that out, a bunch of... You know, I'm filtering it twice. Generally, I'll do that because uh, the filter will load up with all the particles. And then the second time when you do it, it, it actually uh, cleans it up a little bit more. It's like a, a, a tighter filter. And uh, after I did this, I was disappointed to see. Yeah, I, I'll pour this off here. But then as it got to the bottom and I start uh, kind of rinsing the, the, the beaker out there, I get this like hazy there you go that's what we're collecting so far but uh, let me show it come on I thought it was still coming up well I got this haziness I just didn't show it yet in this edit so I filtered it again and as uh, I go through I'm still doing it I, I just couldn't get it to to clean up which is really really rare it's not something that uh, happens too often and here you go I go to rinse it out and I get this again after all that filtration, it was really weird. I'm not exactly sure what to make of that. Because typically, filtering this stuff out, you know, after two times, it's, it's pretty clean. It's, you know, it's, it's generally, I never have this happen. So at, at this point, I'm really confused. I don't know what it is. But it just keeps coming back. So I'm thinking, well, there still could be gold in that. So I'm just going to toss it in here. And uh, after I did it, I did not like it. I sh maybe I should have kept it separate, but I thought I didn't want to lose any gold that might have been trapped in those particles. So I just tested it with stannous chloride. You see that uh, we had a good reaction. And here I just poured in some sodium metabisulfite. And I threw in some big old chunks that were unnecessary. I was like down to the bottom of my container there, and that's what I had. And still, I, I think I had a, a lot of excess nitric acid there. Typically, on when I'm refining, I'll boil that down and then rehydrate the uh, uh, gold when it's in solution and burn off that excess nitrate. Here, look at this line right here. I don't know if you can really see it too good, but like an inch below the surface, there's like a line where the material... I don't know if it's the distilled water. I, I don't know. Something settled on top. They separated a little bit. And that gold was just at a, a, a pure line all the way across the beaker. It was pretty neat. That's not something I, I recall seeing it before either. So I dropped gold out of solution. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that helped separate that those particles that were uh, coming through the filter earlier. But... Hopefully, I'll be able to trap that and get that out of here uh, in the next part of the process. So I'm looking at the gold here, and I'm not feeling very confident. 
at this point I'm thinking what is that like a gram or two you know it's deceiving it kind of looks like more than it is pretty often you know thinking wow I got a, a nice ounce of gold here and you go to melt it down and you're you get a half ounce you know so I'm starting to recognize that and at this point I'm going ooh boy not quite sure if this process is going to be worth uh, worth doing here all right so I I threw the gold filter back in the beaker added more hydrochloric acid a little bit of nitric acid this time I was very careful I didn't want to add too much and uh, we boiled that up here put the gold back into solution still cloudy still cloudy so I'm gonna do some filtering again and whatever is in there it is persistent and I didn't take it to the XRF so I I really don't know what exactly that was uh, diluted a little bit with uh, distilled water I believe here threw some ice in we'll check here with the stannis a sign for gold more SMB look at this I don't deal with with that small amounts of gold very often so putting that that SMB in there and then the solution going clear I was like whoa because <laughs> I put in more than enough SMB I, I might guess I had too much nitric in there as well but all right we finally have the gold out of solution we'll let this settle and here's what we're left with so at this point Normally, I'll decant this solution and uh, go through my rinse procedure right there in the beaker. But this gold was so light and so fluffy, it just wasn't an option. I had to run it through another filter again. And uh, I wanted to capture every bit that I can, so I used this filter set up here this time. Kind of a long process, you know. This is uh, a lot of work here. And as I'm looking down, that's our goal, really. I mean, that's it. You know, as soon as I tilted the beaker to the side, it all kind of filtered down to that corner. And it's like, oh, oh, man. <laughs> not, what I'm tip not what I typically uh, see in a batch. It was like, well, both the, uh, the owner of this material and myself were, were surprised with the yield. A little disappointed. He'd put a lot of wind work into it, as did I, so... So, so it, the smart thing for me to do is uh, what I generally do is I'll have something when it's questionable I'll test it on an XRF and get that result uh, but alright so now I gotta go through a rinse procedure here so right here it's a little bit of distilled water and uh, get that to a boil uh, and I'm just kinda rinsing all that other solution out of there and uh, I go through that next I'm gonna boil up some uh, or heat up some uh, hydrochloric acid I run that through and uh, I went through another rinse procedure with distilled water and that's what I was left with all right so I'm, I'm still hoping for big things here you know sometimes you know maybe all that gold stuck in that very bottom corner in the middle of there and yeah, we'll see I let this sit around for a spell and uh, it dried up it's I don't think there's any water in it at this point. So we'll throw it in the crucible here and uh, melt it down, see what we got. I started off, generally, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll preheat the crucible. Sometimes it really doesn't matter. This time I thought I'm going to preheat it so when I do put this paper filter in, yeah, that's the reaction you're going to see. It's just going to start to uh, burn up right away. Add a little flame to it, and that gets rid of a lot of that paper before I have to really hit the torch to it minimize the risk of any of it blowing out and you can start to see the gold look at that and it's still very beautiful just a very very small amount uh, for that amount of waste the time that it took to do it definitely not worth the yield uh, i let it sit around too long and it stuck to the dish so there we go i'll pull it out of here and uh, we'll cool it down and nothing. It's so small you didn't even get a sizzle. <laughs> so it, it, this little button at this point, I'm going, man, this e-waste. I tell you, <laughs> it, it takes a, a different breed. Of, oh, here we go. 0.8 grams. 
Yeah, definitely not worth it. It, it takes a different breed of refiner to uh, go through all that work just for this little bit. Yeah, well, so there's my experience with this stuff. I'm Jeff. This is Lithic Metals. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.